All right, this week I thought I'd talk about happiness and its relationship to living off the grid. But whilst I'm doing that, I'm also gonna finish off the toilet over there. You know, I reckon I'm happier now than I've ever been in my entire life, which is kind of incredible when you think about it. I mean, I'm just about to go and paint a toilet and yet I'll still be happy doing that. And I mean, if you're gonna look at it analytically, I guess you'd say, well, so what? Because there are many things that go into kind of making your life happy or not. So you could say, well, to what extent is that down to your relationship with your wife or your, your family or your job or any of the other things that you have going on in your life? But I don't know, this year I had a, a, an opportunity to kind of really test out to what extent that happiness has derived from living off grid as opposed to living in a very luxurious house but I'll, I'll get onto that later. For now, I'm just gonna get some painting gear and uh, head over to the toilet. I really should have painted this thing the minute I finished building it, but I didn't. I left it for a few months and now it's covered in like cobwebs and flies and it's quite annoying. I'm gonna have to brush it all off and I've put that huge white pipe, which is an extraction fan for the composting toilet, which is gonna be right in the way, and I'm in, the, in danger of splattering it with, uh, with paint or stain, so um, not ideal. Anyway, this is meant to be about happiness, and here I am moaning. Right, anyway, let's get on with it. Firstly, I should define what I mean by happiness. I think everyone knows happiness when they feel it, but it needs to be separated from joy or bliss. It's not like I'm going around in a constant state of bliss. I mean, human beings have not evolved for such things. We're not like Labrador dogs just running around with our tails wagging madly all the time. You know, life has its ups and downs and there's always these minor irritations, but most of the time I'm massively happy and the irritations that come along typically don't last very long. Before I get onto that idea of how off-grid living is related to happiness, or as I see it, I feel I should give you the backstory of what we're doing here. So we were living in, in and around London for almost two decades, and particularly in the lockdown, our life seemed to kind of, it was incredibly sort of indoors. We spent all of our time inside, and. In that period, we were watching a lot of YouTube videos and they tended to be either kind of camping and hiking in Alaska or people living, living off grid. And I'm not sure why, I think there was some sort of desire to be out in nature. And in many ways, it felt like we were sort of cocooned in this little prison of our own making. It was a very luxurious prison, I'm not knocking it. We, you know, we made good money and that allowed us to sort of feather our nest and we bought nice things, nice stereo, nice TV or whatever. And it was, it, it was a good place to just sit down and relax and all the rest of it. But we were missing that kind of connection with the outdoors, I think. And that's probably why we started watching so many of those off-grid videos. It wasn't like all of those videos became like some sort of blueprint for us and we thought, right, that's exactly what we need to do with our lives. It was much more subtle than that. It was more like those ideas were kind of just seeds somewhere in the back of our mind. It was really when we came to New Zealand and then particularly when we saw this land and it came up for sale and we thought, okay, you know, that could work. We could, we could live there. And I guess all the things that we'd been watching they started to make sense and everything kind of fell into place a little bit. At this point, I managed to spill a whole load of paint all over my shorts. Rather than give up, I thought I'd just jump in the shower with my shorts on and then finish off that day painting in my underpants. You know, if you think of the idea of success, and I think the best definition I've ever heard of success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. And 
you know, that's what was going on. That felt like for us what was going on where we were doing something that was really difficult. You know, it was hard to leave family. It was hard to leave friends. It was really difficult giving up two careers and two income sources and just kind of closing the door on the whole lot and thought, well, we'll just work it out. You know, something will happen. We'll, we'll make it work. It, it, was a, it was a pretty bold and kind of scary move. But when you start working towards something, I think that in itself brings... I think that in itself brings a certain amount of pleasure. I think that idea of the progressive realisation of a worthy ideal is something that it just keeps happening as well with off-grid living. You could be doing anything. You could be working towards becoming the greatest Scrabble player in your city or whatever your goal is, and you would get a joy from, you know, progressing along that line. Living like this, there's just so much to do. You start out with nothing. You know, we bought a piece of land and we didn't even have shelter. So that's a problem that needs to be solved. And how are you going to do that? And, you know, for us, we, we bought a bus, and but that leaked and it smelled and it had rats in the walls and, you know, you're constantly working towards making your life better and each little sort of step that you go up, it has a reward. Partly there's the kind of, the technical side of it, I guess, of like, oh, how does that work? How do I get water into a bus? How do I get water out of it? Well, whatever it is. Partly there's that, like, like doing a jigsaw puzzle that gives you a buzz. But there's also a lot of happiness to be gained when your life kind of improves a little layer. And I found that that's quite difficult to do in a city because you know, you tend to already have all of the things that you need. And, you know, in some ways it can become like this kind of gilded cage, this sort of luxurious prison where you're trying to make it slightly nicer. Oh, if I had a nicer car or a better TV or what, whatever it might be, or you go on a nicer holiday and, you know, you need to make more money to, to get that thing. There's definitely a pleasure in that too, and I'm not knocking it. I don't, I want to be careful about creating some kind of dichotomy where you sort of say, oh, you know, city living terrible, off-grid living fantastic. It's definitely not as simple as that. There was, you know, I had huge amounts of joy from living in the, in the city and, you know, chasing certain goals. But as I got older, I felt, I felt like I attained those goals and then life became, instead of this massive challenge, it more became like kind of conformity where I was just going out, doing a job and making money, but without a real kind of reason to be doing it other than just to escape that life and think, well, I'll buy a holiday with the money and I'll go somewhere nicer. It's strange, just being outside and being in nature seems to fill me with a certain level of happiness. I just like being out here. I reckon most people are probably like that. Human beings have been around for millennia living outside and it's really only in the last few hundred years, I guess, that we've all kind of come inside and then started to have these quite sedentary lives where we're sitting down a lot of the time. You know, and that in itself seems to cause problems. You know, people get all kinds of backache and issues with just sort of just not moving, not walking around, not doing stuff. Um, and I definitely felt that. I think having those physical differences where you can be outside and you can feel weather beaten, either you can feel hot and sweaty and sticky or you might feel cold and wet and damp and you, you kind of want to come inside and after a day of just being out and about doing stuff, it can feel like real luxury to come in or to have a shower or something like that. And I felt like before I was living in a life where I was constantly at the same temperature. You know, I was always at whatever the, the thermostat in the house was set to. And the problem with that is that you don't get any joy. I find that here, if I'm working really hard, I can kind of physically exhaust myself. And then there's a joy just in sitting down, you know, just to go like, oh, I'm gonna put my tools down and go inside and just sit. And so you're getting happiness from something that's just so basic just to have a rest. Whereas when you have that all the time, it, there is no payoff, or I never found that there was a payoff. I just felt like I could have sit around in the warm in a house and, and at no point did I think, oh, this is really nice just to be sitting down in the warm. It's just, um, yeah, having that variation seems to help for me. When I was living in a city, my life was fairly future focused. 
I think a lot of the time when I was working, I was working towards something, getting some money to do something. And a lot of the time it was a kind of trade off where I thought, okay, well, I'll trade my time in order to get back, usually to come here, funnily enough, to come here to New Zealand on holiday in, in the UK winter or to go skiing or snowboarding or something like that. And so I was sort of not really like fully, I don't know, I wasn't fully living in that present moment. I was more doing something so that I could do something better in the future. Here, there's been a complete change and I feel that I'm not looking forward to anything. I'm not trying to go anywhere. I certainly don't want to go on holiday. I'm living in this kind of present day and my only hope with each day is really that I can just do it again. I'd be quite happy to live in a groundhog day and quite often I get these days that I think like that was an awesome day. I'd be perfectly happy to just live that day again and again. I think city living has something of a kind of competitive element to it. And people use that phrase, keeping up with the Joneses, and I think that's nonsense. I don't think anyone looks over at their neighbour and tries to get the same car. I think it's much more kind of pervasive though. You know, in a city, you all want the same stuff. You know, everybody wants to be like near the nice park where there's a good pub round the corner, where there's a kind of market you can go to on a Sunday and et cetera, et cetera. And the deal is there's just a lot of people competing for those same meagre resources and the competition's high. You're competing against hedge fund managers and Saudi billionaires and whoever else. Therefore, you're kind of automatically at the bottom of that hierarchy. I feel like I had a really good job and I feel like I earned really good money and my wife did too. And yet, I think we always felt that we were sort of somehow struggling because the competition level is so high. I mean, it wasn't like it haunted me. I wasn't going around worrying about it. It was only that when I came here that I realized that that existed and that competitive element is just completely gone. I mean, I'm not trying to be anything. I'm not, I don't want for more, you know, that's, that's a big part of it. Yeah, I don't want for more. Last winter we had this really interesting opportunity to look after a really nice house not far from here and it was a good way to kind of contrast those two styles of living from living in a really big luxurious house versus a very cheap leaky old bus and you know the weird thing was and I want to be kind of honest about this as honest as possible you know when I got there I did think like oh this is this is really nice there was definitely a feeling of I guess luxury, it was like walking into a kind of five-star hotel and, you know, the first few mornings I'd get up and make a coffee and instead of going outside, you kind of sit on the sofa and you could look out on the water on this beautiful view. And, and that definitely did bring me some, some happiness. But what I found was that I was going out less. I would more likely spend the morning kind of sitting inside and reading a book and looking outside than I would kind of going out into the, into the garden. And over time that meant that, I don't know, I just sort of felt less happy inside the house. of that size it takes quite a lot to just to maintain it there's a lot to clean so you end up spending all your time sort of inside and cleaning and working on the house as it were and you could argue that if you buy a house that's off grid or you're homesteading or whatever it is because you have more land that you spend that same time maintaining the garden and working on the garden and that's true but the difference for me is that that type of work of being outside in nature and doing stuff I find really enjoyable and really rewarding. Whereas being inside the house and cleaning the kitchen and taking care of the house, it just, just doesn't, it doesn't bring me much happiness.
That is the outdoor shower area complete. If you've made it this far, thanks so much for listening along to my slightly odd philosophical meanderings. Drop me a note in the comments. It'd be good to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.